Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. And today, of course, I'm joined by Andrew, but back on the show and in person. In person. Oh, look at that. Matt Thomas. What episode is Matt? Do you remember? Oh, gosh, you're going to make me remember. I'm going to say, and I'm going to look this up, but I'm going to say he was episode 894. I'm looking up. Okay. So. Joined again in the flesh by Matt Thomas. We're, we're here in Woburn, Mass. And yes, that is how you say that to those of you outside of New England. You were here presenting at a conference and said, hey, you know, let's, let's reconnect. Let's talk about the heart. Were you right? 892. 892. Of course. <laughs> so you can go back to Matt's interview episode on 892. And you were here talking about state change management at this conference. And that, that's the... The subject that we we got into a little bit on your interview, but you know this gives us the opportunity to go we a little deeper. It. Yeah, and here we are delivering. We're back. <laughs> yeah, and really this idea of well, I, you know what? Forget me talking. You're the guest. What's state change management? <laughs> okay, so throughout the day, even outside of the the context of martial arts, throughout the day we go through different states. You you feel different first thing in the morning when you wake up versus after you work out. You feel different when you eat good food versus bad food, sure. when you uh, ha have different kinds of conversations. Maybe you have a falling out with a, with a coworker mm -hmm. versus having like a deep heart to heart with a, a loved one. These, these all create different uh, neurochemicals, different mm -hmm. feelings in the, in the body. And uh, being aware of those can help you, can, can help you optimize the outcome of those. So, um, what state change management helps you do is identify and optimize mm. for whatever the, the priority is. Priority could be, hey, going into this difficult conversation uh, with a coworker, I want to be very patient. I want to be very present. I want to be very op empathetic. I don't want to be abrasive. I don't want to scare them. So you, even though it's an important conversation and naturally, you might have a higher heart rate. You might have a little mm -hmm. adrenaline in your system. You might be firing mm -hmm. up parts of your brain that are more fight, flight, or freeze. You can prime your brain and, and by extension, your delivery in order to be more like what you need it to be in order for a successful outcome. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in that kind of context, if I'm trying to calm down, be a little bit more present, be able to connect with someone, I, I would want to lower my heart rate signal to my central nervous system it's okay to exit fight or flight and and be really uh calm and and and, and empathetic and 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 present when i'm in that kind of conversation now when we we take that out of our day-to-day -day life and into the context of martial arts because we're on a martial arts podcast <laughs> um the same kind of thing exists uh in all martial arts but especially in chess boxing because uh, when you're doing chess boxing, and if you aren't familiar, board game chess, sitting down, low heart rate, moving pieces. Hopefully low heart rate. Hopefully low heart rate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, good, good little tease there. Uh, and, and, and then, you know, boxing, mm. you need to be hyper present. You're thinking about action, present tense mm. right now. Right. Shots that can come, shots I can throw back. Um, you know, it, th those are two very different parts of your brain that you need to fire up in order to be really good at, at, at either one. Sure. Yeah, my, my, my knowledge of state, and not that he refers to it as state change management, Tony Robbins talks a lot about state. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. You know, and, and it's, um, as I heard him talk about that, it's something that I've played with in my life. I, he, he would talk about it as trying to get into state. Mm -hmm. And it was fascinating as I've, I've kind of navigated some of the Tony Robbins stuff how dramatically different the same experience is from different states. Do you know what he travels with and what he does right before he goes on stage? He has a mini trampoline that he doesn't go anywhere without. And he has it right backstage, right before he walks out. He does a breath that we're going to do today called Kabbalah Bhati from yoga. It's, it, it's very similar to a Wim Hof style breath mm -hmm. or it's hyperventilations. And he will bounce on the trampoline and do Wim Hof style breathing right before he walks out. That psychs up his central nervous system. And that's a very similar breath to what I do before I walk out for a boxing round. 
Oh, ready? Unless you're ready, ready to fight. Interesting. Right yeah, that's really cool. You, you do any? You ever done anything like that? No. Like psych no, yourself up before a competition or anything? No, but I, I mean, I'm familiar with what you're talking about, but I, I was not aware that Tony Robbins did it, though it does not necessarily surprise me. Mm -hmm. uh, because this concept of state change management, like you mentioned, just in your day-to-day -day life, whether you're having to go in and have a difficult conversation with someone or psych other people up, that those ne things aren't necessarily martial arts, but they're stuff that we have all the time. And Tony Robbins is not a martial artist, but it actually he might be. If he is, yes, no. he's trained. I've actually, tried. I've tried. I'm not done trying, but I've tried to get Tony Robbins on the yeah. show. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so um, but it doesn't surprise me that he would know these techniques and use them in his in his life in his speaking. So that, that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah. So his. His training and how he started coaching is an NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm -hmm. So essentially what you do when you uh, perform NLP on someone else or even yourself is you're, you're recognizing patterns, mm -hmm. you're keeping the good ones, and you're breaking the bad ones in order to prime for whatever kind of performance that you want to have. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's very similar that that kind of work that he does for people's lives, no matter the... Uh, you know, uh, type of activity they want to do. It's very similar to what we do in chess boxing and what martial arts can do, or martial artists can do uh, when they're trying to prime for peak performance. Um, and it's funny, last night uh, after the conference, there's a gym in Boston called Redline. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were helping out of that conference. They told me that they were having 20 fights last night. Uh, and I was like, well, you know, I don't have plans tonight. Like, uh, I want to come watch some fights. Yeah. Like we're in Boston. <laughs> we'll see what these guys got. And, uh, and they said they needed a commentator. So I was like, okay, you know, it's boxing. I can talk about boxing. So, um, I end up going and I, I get on the mic and talking about some of the, the fights and, and the fighters and I share chess boxing. And there were a few since since I, since Seth fans that were in the gym that remember the chess boxing episode, oh, which nice. is how we initially connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and one of them came up after and said, hey, listen, I'm an MMA fighter, I'm amateur, I, I have pro aspirations, and I've already seen uh, benefits from implementing the breath work that you shared with Seth and, and with you guys uh, just for uh, priming, not just for competition, but also for training. Um, and, and the benefit here is like, I don't just do this breath right before I compete, mm -hmm. I, I do this breath every single time I do any kind of uh, boxing related activity or chess related activity. And I think that's mm -hmm. the important thing to understand here is like, just like, you know, the guy that throws a, a thousand kicks once or one kick a thousand times, it, it is all about the repetition and, and tying a certain activity that you're doing uh, to whatever activity comes after it that you want peak performance in. There's the P in NLP. Exactly. Yep. You've got to do Programming. it over and over and over again. So it becomes automatic. Informed repetition. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you guys want to learn? I do. Learn yeah. these breaths? Yeah, okay. So um, the first thing we're going to do is, is talk about what a good breath is. So a, a lot of people, their normal breaths are, are like a 20 to 30% really um, like shadow of what it should mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, when they breathe, they'll be breathing into their shoulders. Their shoulders will be raising up and down. Maybe their chest is expanding a little bit, but there's very little belly breathing going on. So their, their diaphragm isn't moving uh, up and down. Um, and they also aren't filling up their lungs from the bottom, which helps move around your organs uh, and helps with digestion. And I, I've struggled with digestive issues my entire life. When I started breathing like this, um, everything started getting uh, just smoother, easier, uh, <laughs> <laughs> laughing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Experientially, but I, I also, I'm acknowledging your, uh, delicate description. Yeah. It's easier to poop. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but yeah. I mean, Which it's is funny because you're the first person to, I uh, normally, yeah. yeah. Everybody poops. It's true. It's, it's, Hopefully. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. If, yeah anyway. <laughs> So what we're going to do, I'm glad we got you on the show. we're, we're going to learn a good breath. Okay. okay. So what, I, I want you to put your middle fingers together and then put it right on your, your belly button, your navel. Okay. Spread out your fingers nice and wide and you should feel the bottom of your rib cage with your thumbs and you should feel right about your belt line with your pinkies. Yep. 
Okay? So what we're going to do is just try to make your hands rise and separate and fall and come back together. Okay? So we're inhaling through our nose, making our stomach rise. Exhaling, feeling our stomach contract. Exhale through the nose too? Air coming back out. Yeah. It, 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 as long as you aren't congested, you do both of these through the nose. It's not a big deal if, you're, if, you, if you need to do it through the mouth. The reason why nose breathing is a little better is it helps signal to the body that that air with oxygen is coming in and, and you're able to make more efficient use of the oxygen that's coming in. Um, so, so something that happens, just keep doing this breath, keep getting used to it. We're going to use it in, in a second. Um, but something that, you know, if you take like supplements in the morning and your body doesn't need the vitamins and the supplements, you just pee it out. Yeah. Same thing happens with oxygen. So if, if you have, it, when you breathe in, you're breathing in three gases. You're breathing in um, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. Um, your, your body makes use of the oxygen. It's kind of like fuel. Mm -hmm. um, your body, in order to use the oxygen, your body needs carbon dioxide. It kind of works like a yin and yang. Like a, if there's a carbon dioxide deficit, that helps use more of the oxygen that you're bringing in. Um, and then nitrogen is the last one. Um, so... As you're breathing, you, you really want to focus, uh, a lot of people think of breathing as like, oh, I need to take like a lot of air in, in order to have oxygen in my, my bloodstream. You actually want to be focusing on the exhale. You want to be pushing a lot of air out. A lot of people aren't exhaling to empty because it feels a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. when you're starting to get used to it. But I want you to start inhaling all the way up to full lung capacity, feeling full, and then exhaling all the way down to empty lung capacity. And just hold briefly at the bottom, feel what that's like, and then start the spectrum of breath again, inhaling all the way up, belly, then chest, then shoulders, then exhaling, all the way down to empty. And you feel that natural contraction when you're trying to get the last bit of air out, we're going to use that contraction in our first breath. Okay. So you can uh, release your hands and just rest them on your... Um, your, your thighs here. You're gonna roll your shoulders up towards your ears, down your back. That opens up your chest, gives yourself a little bit more, more space to breathe. And this first one that we're doing is called fire breath. It's Kabbalah Bhati. Um, it, it's we're gonna a breathe fire. We're gonna breathe fire. Sweet. Yeah. So sorry about all your equipment here. It's about to get torched. Um, <laughs> no, right. Thank you for playing along on the yeah. terrible <laughs> jokes. I appreciate yes, that. Yes, I'm gonna edit some, some flames in. <sighs> or it could just be, you know, <laughs> breakfast of garlic. Yeah, <laughs> a bowl of garlic and milk. Yeah, garlic puffs, onions. <laughs> okay, so um, this breath has been in practice for thousands of years, it, mostly in the East through yoga, uh, but it's been popularized in the West. Um, this guy named Wim Hof uses it for, to endure cold temperatures, hold his breath a long time. Free divers use it to to stay uh, down underwater for a long time, be able to get deeper. Um, Another and, guy we're trying to get on the show. Oh, free diving. No, we we're trying to, get, trying to get Wim, trying to get Wim Hof. Oh, sure. Wim. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, he'd be great. Yep. Um, so I hate to say it, and if Wim eventually comes on the show and sees this, I'm sorry, but he totally ripped off his breath, right? So he he adapted it and made it his own, and and popularized okay. it and built a certification around it. But this has been in practice long before Wim, um, and and we're going to use it, it, it through the context of martial arts to psych up right before, um, let, let's say a first round, right? You have your warm up, um, but usually after a warm up, there's a walkout, there's a walkout song, mm -hmm. the opponent's walking out, they have their walkout song, yep. there's rules, there's a touch of gloves. What, what I do is right before the bell's about to ring, I get repetitions of this breath. I'm in my corner looking at my opponent and I'm doing this hyperventilation style breathing. So what it's gonna look like, I wanna pick up my, my stomach here because it's kind of hard to see with black. Um, so I'm gonna breathe all the way up to full. And I'm gonna have a little bit of a Buddha belly here when I do that. I'm gonna breathe all the way down to empty. There's the spectrum of my breath again. And then I'm gonna fill up to about halfway. And then I'm gonna do abdominal compressions to push about 20% of my, my breath out at the same time that I'm doing uh, th this abdominal compression, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like a forced exhale. Mm. That's creating that carbon dioxide deficiency mm -hmm. that makes the natural inhale that follows the exhale 
uh, the oxygen that's coming in, my body's more able to use that. Mm. So it's getting oxygen into my bloodstream, okay. up to my brain. I'm getting hyper present and I'm starting to engage the part of my brain that's really good at fighting called the amygdala. Mm. That's the center of our fear response. It's the fight, flight, or freeze part of our brain. It's the caveman part of our brain that kept us alive back in the day. Mm. That's hyper present. That's thinking about action uh, and, and being alive and surviving right now. Okay, so it's going to look like this. I'm going to demonstrate that we'll do it together. So I'm filling up. Going all the way to empty. Filling up halfway. And I'll do 10 compressions. Okay. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So we're going to start with a, a beginner style of breath. No, no. How's your nose? Uh, your nose? Your nose clear? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. You'll get a little snot. Uh, that, it's natural. It's fine. Just wipe your nose. Whatever. Uh, if you want to breathe out your nose and you don't want some snot coming out, do that. Um, We're going to get a lot of new we, ASMR listeners. By you know, yeah. on this one. there aren't a lot of firsts on this show. Mm -hmm. Boogers. We have not had a Here show. Here we are. Boogers. We're almost wrapping up nine years of recording. I don't think we've had boogers on this show. All right. Uh, not yeah. asking for it. Just <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. Su suggested title for this episode. Nine snot years rocket. without boogers. Snot rocket. Snot rocket. Hey, <laughs> we've had worse titles. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we we are going to do a very beginner version of this mm -hmm. first. Um, I think you guys can can do a, a maybe an intermediate or more advanced one after. Mm -hmm. sure. But the beginner one is like if you've never done breath work. Um, and especially if you tend to get like lightheaded or, or whatever, but you still want to start to practice this, this is a, a, a version of Kabbalah Bhati that was popularized by Gary Brecka. You guys know who he is? No. Um, he has a, a podcast called the ultimate human podcast. He's a human biologist. He, um, uh, two years ago, uh, met Dana White and, uh, and could just see that he was super unhealthy. Um, said, hey, let me run some tests. Let me make some recommendations. If they help, let me uh, coach you back to good health. And if you look at Dana White now. Yeah, he's oh, in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, it's, it, that was Gary Brecka. So nice. yeah, Gary Brecka essentially saved Dana White's life. He had like three years left because he, um, he, he had this uh, metabolic syndrome mm. uh, that's really hard to spot, but that was kind of his specialty. Um, and, uh, and, and so anyway, enough about Gary Brecka, but, uh, <laughs> that this is his, his you're, like you're first step. You're acknowledging into... people that have, have contributed to this. It's, yeah. I think it's, it's important. I think it's a really good way to teach the beginner breath. I, I didn't start out this way, um, but I can see how, if you've never done this kind of thing, It'd this is a really good first step. Okay. Yeah. So, sure. um, we're going to do three rounds of five of those hyperventilations. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So just follow me. Hands on, uh, hands on thighs, shoulders back. Try to relax those shoulders away from the ear. Take the tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Relax your jaw. Body's relaxed right now. Take a big inhale through the nose all the way up to full lung capacity. Full exhale all the way to empty. We'll come up to halfway and begin. Five exhales. All the way up. All the way down. Halfway. All the way up, all the way down, halfway, last five, all the way up, all the way down, hold it empty for as long as you can, and scan your body. So things you might be noticing in your body right now, maybe a little bit of a head rush, maybe some tingles or a temperature change down your fingertips, maybe some snot on your upper lip. And just get your general body feel too. What I mean by that is like, is there a little bit more energy flow? Does it feel like there's more blood flow? Do you feel a little bit more present, a little bit more focused? That was just five breaths. I feel fired up. Three in a row. I, I felt it in my hands actually. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I only had a little bit of smoke. Yep. Um, so five breaths, pretty safe. Like, you know, don't, don't sue me. Um, but you, you go too far with this. There's some risk. There's some risk. So, so proceed with caution. Like you could get lightheaded. You could pass out. We're not doctors. We're not doctors. No, no. Um, this is, this is where I haven't done the Wim Hof stuff, but I've heard people talk about training it, getting better at it, progressing yes. with it. This is what you're talking about is adding breaths and 
This is starting with a jab and a step, okay. and then building up to like a multi-punch combination. Makes sense. Right, so this is the jab. This, this is your first step in starting to build up to where this can actually be really useful. Mm. Three, you know, three rounds of five breaths in the morning, boom, I'm a little bit more awake. Maybe you, you know, maybe it feels like the first sip of coffee. Mm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we, we now we'll, we'll shift context to okay. how I use it. Mm -hmm. So in between a chess and a boxing round, there's one minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, in one minute, I go for three rounds of 36 breaths for 108 total breaths. Okay, so we just did 15. Um, still, you know, maybe that took about 30 seconds with that big breath in between. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're taking that almost 10 xing it. Um, so you're breathing that, quick. Very quick. That a minute. Yeah, yeah. So you can demonstrate a little bit if you yeah. want. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll do the same thing. Um, let, let's say, okay, boom, bell rings. Uh, chest is over, they pause the, pause the game, pause the timer, they're starting to move the board out of the ring. That bell ringing is my Pavlov's dog moment, right? Mm -hmm. That's my trigger. Gotcha. My training kicks in. I've done this thousands of times. You right? immediately go into it. Correct. Yep. So, okay. So, okay. Uh, I, I stand up, I take a big inhale. I start walking over my corner, my corner man starts putting on my gloves, I begin my three rounds of 36 breaths. So. Second round, okay? Mm. So, um, you know, I'm doing this as my corner man's taking care of the necessary action of that getting my gloves. Care. Right, getting right. My I hadn't gloves even thought ready. of that, but that makes yeah. so much sense. Yep, right. yep. So, you need a tissue? No, I'm good. Okay. Yep, I got my fingers, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we've all sweat and bled and oh, yeah. snotted on each other in training at some point. Everybody poops, everyone has snot. You know, we're, we're accepting our yep. human Absolutely. Uni yeah. unifying For sure. materials here. Um, so by the end of these 108 breaths, I am in the same state as every time I sparred in preparation for that match. Mm. I'm in the same state as uh, when I won a world championship doing chess boxing. I'm in the same state as when I've been the, the, the most present most effective, my, my peak performance. I'm tapping back wow. into that same stream of consciousness, mm -hmm. that same river of, of peak performance that I've been priming for the whole time I've been competing. So, oh, go ahead. so you, you know, we're talking right now specifically that one minute you have between rounds, but you're doing this on a regular, on a daily basis when you're sparring too, like getting yourself there so that when you're in the match, it, your brain is used to it. Yes. It's like yes. flipping a switch. Correct. You know yeah. exactly where you're going to in, in using this. Yes, and it becomes subconscious. Mm -hmm. So in, in training, it needs to be conscious and, and, and intentional. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm in competition, I want to limit as much conscious thought as I can that so that my, con my subconscious is taken over. Mm -hmm. And I can use more of my bandwidth to, to problem solve, recognize patterns, and mm -hmm. perform. Make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. Thanks. So can, um, can you describe what you, how it feels? If it's different, both in training and in competition, you know, you, you run through this 108 breaths, you know, you mentioned you might feel a little tingly, you might feel a little lightheaded, you might feel energized. How do you feel? Invigorated. Yeah. Yeah. Present, ready to perform. Um, even now, like my body thinks I'm about to fight. Really? Um, and, and I'm, I'm past my like active competition days. Um, so now I'll use that breath like in the morning, kind of like Gary Brecca does with, with part of a morning routine. Mm -hmm. When I was competing, I, I needed to deprive myself of that breath any time that I wasn't about to fight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I'll be kind of tricking my body oh, into thinking I'm about to that, go fight. That makes sense, but was not something I would yeah. have thought of. Right, so, so like you, you don't want to dull the effect of the breath by doing it in contexts that you aren't about to do whatever Music, you want to yeah. tie it to, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're tying these together like a one-two punch, right? Yeah. And every time I throw one, I'm throwing a two. Uh, every time I do this breath, I'm about to compete. It's like coffee every day, you know, doesn't have quite the same effect, but you know, if you're not a caffeine drinker and you have a cup of coffee, woo! Exactly. 
Yep. And now it's, it's, it's shifting more into like a coffee cup and a cup of coffee in the morning for me. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I'm, you know, I, I'm not trying to optimize to go win another world championship. Right. I'm trying to optimize to feel really good in the morning and maybe not rely on coffee as much. Sure. Nice. Right. Cool. Okay. So now that we're a little bit psyched up. Yeah. We're going to learn the opposite side of the spectrum of breath to calm down. Okay. So after a boxing round, bell rings, same Pavlov dog kind of moment, right? Here's my trigger. As soon as that bell rings, make my way to the corner. I take my first sharp inhale, take as much air in as I can up to full lung capacity. And I'm the most tired right then. It's the end of the round. Yeah, I, I was sure. just boxing for three minutes, right? So my worst breath is going to be that first breath. My goal is every breath after that is going to get better. Now, what does better mean? Better means a longer exhale. So every single breath I take from that first bell and that first breath is going to get longer and longer and longer, slower and slower and slower. Now, you're, you're not talking a lot about the, the chemistry on this, but my understanding of, of how the body works, the longer the breath is, the deeper it's putting you into a parasympathetic state. Yes. So, so you're, you're calming down your parasympathetic yeah. nervous system. And, and in the context of chest boxing, your amygdala, what, what you use, what fires up when you fight, mm -hmm. it's keeping you alive. It sucks at playing chess, mm. right? It's the <laughs> yeah. caveman part of your brain. Yeah. You might chess, as well be wearing boxing gloves. Yeah. And, and chess is called the king's game. You don't want to be a caveman playing a king's game, right? You, you want to be using yeah, the part of your brain yeah, yeah. Okay. that's really good at executive function, sure. uh, decision making, pattern recognition, visualization, strategic thought, not just thinking about action in the present, thinking about reaction in the future. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about state change management. We're yep. going from a present state, amygdala centered kind of activity to a future state, prefrontal cortex focused. The part activity. of the brain you use for chess. Correct. Makes sense. So. The, the simplest way to start doing this is exhale longer than you inhale. That's all you got to do. You don't have to count number of breaths. You don't have to count, uh, you know, length of inhale, length of exhale. I think you should. That's kind of the next step is like, uh, I, I try to keep my inhales four seconds or shorter. And then I try to keep my exhale five seconds or longer. Cause you're coming out, you're, you're breathing hard, you're breathing heavy. And that first breath is just, I'm trying to get some semblance of control so I can reverse the tide. Step one, if, if I don't have blood in my nose or it's not broken or whatever, I try to shift from a mouth breathing to a nose breathing. Mm -hmm. So. <sighs> and I think we probably all had this happen at some point, whether we've been in a sparring match or whether we've gone on a long bike ride and you need to calm down. We've all instinctually gone from mouth breathing to nose breathing. Nose yeah, and breathing. There's, there's something pretty primal. And, and yeah, and that makes well sense. About it. But it happen, when it happens naturally and subconsciously, it happens a lot later mm. yeah. than if you're training. I need yep. to do this sooner. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I live in Georgia. Georgia's a pretty warm place. I've been up in the Northeast a lot lately, like New York last weekend, Boston this weekend. There. It's cold. So one thing I, I started playing with is um, my, my body feel when I'm cold, my shoulders are up, my mm -hmm. chest is tense, my abs are mm -hmm. tense, right? I'm here and I'm breathing a lot shorter. And I tried, okay, let me pretend I'm warm and relax my body. <sighs> Immediately, I got warmer. Hmm. Temperature outside didn't change, but I, I was more relaxed. And even though the, the temperature was cold, my body was acting as if it was warm and I felt more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the same thing works when you do cold plunges. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be, oh, 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 this is terrible. You yeah, want to yeah. be breathing slow, easy, calm breaths, mm -hmm. and long, deep Makes breaths. Sense. Okay. So um, the, the special forces use a version of this yogic breath called Samavriti, okay. called box breathing. Oh, yeah. So box breathing is four equal counts, four mm -hmm. second inhale, four second hold, four, four second, second exhale, yep. four second hold with empty. Now that empty hold, especially if you're beginning in breath work, it's uncomfortable. And I, I recommend just cutting it out. Just, just make that more of an exhale, just slow down your exhale a little bit longer instead of that four second hold. So uh, another option here is a four, seven, eight breath. It's, it's another popular breath. Um, we, yeah, I, I had a virtual wellness uh, business that 
did this for, for companies, like, mm. a, like in a workforce, we would do this breath instead of the empty hold, just because you're sitting in an office, mm -hmm. uh, you might not have ever done this kind of thing before. So instead, four second inhale, seven second hold, eight second exhale. Okay. Really calming, good for anti-anxiety, anti-stress, uh, you know, right before you go into a stressful conversation, right after a stressful conversation, this is a really good breath. So um, let, let's try that one. Yeah. Take a four yeah. second inhale, we'll do a seven second hold, we'll do an eight second exhale. Okay. Okay. So we'll do the same baseline breath, explore the spectrum of your lungs, big inhale all the way up, exhale all the way down, relax the whole body, begin the inhale for four, three, two, one, hold, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three more, inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, inhale, one, two, three, Three, four, hold one, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, last one, inhale one, two, three, four, and hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Close your eyes. Return to a normal pattern of breathing. Scan your body the same way you did after Kabbalah Bhati. Notice any body sensations. Notice mental state. I'm definitely more relaxed. For sure. I I've done a lot of box breathing. It's one of my go-tos if I'm feeling eh. mm -hmm. That worked way better. Way better for me. Hmm. And especially as you talk about that, that hold without air it can add can stress be, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the thing because i have to hold with empty for four seconds i'm thinking about trying to make it to four i'm putting stress on my my brain and then by extension my central nervous system and that's not that i have to do this focused on exactly yeah that's so that's cool. that's why i say just try to exhale mm -hmm. longer than you inhale. sharp four, inhale seven, eight. long exhale four, seven, eight. Yeah, i dig it that's really cool i'm gonna try switching that in and see what that does yeah good stuff Make it last as long as you can. So, um, and is that what you're what you're doing when you come out of a boxing round? You're not counting. You're just, I'm going to go as long as I can. That's how I coach beginners do it. Okay. So when I'm when I'm teaching the beginning of state change management for chess boxers, exhale longer than inhale. Don't worry about the count. Mm -hmm. Start to close your eyes and visualize the board. Because the, the other thing that's going on here is you're, you're starting to shift your brain's bandwidth from your amygdala or your prefrontal cortex, but you also want to shift your temporal spatial part of your brain, what, what understands time and space. Mm -hmm. When you're fighting, time and space is very different. You're moving around a 3D environment and you're, you're throwing and you're dodging and you're, you're doing a, a much more dynamic kind of brain exercise mm -hmm. that your body has to keep up with. The, the temporal spatial part of chess is, is very two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. You're still in a 3D, 3D space, but the way that you're thinking about it is almost like that overhead digital version of chess. Sure, you're sure. seeing 64 squares, you're, you're seeing pattern recognition, and you're starting to consider a lot more headspace, future tense, uh, action and reaction. You're thinking about candidate moves, what responses to those candidate moves would be, and you're starting to take uh, your, your brain from what's called a spontaneous cognition state where there's ideation going on, to starting to hone that in to uh, ID, uh, ID, idea <laughs> uh, evaluation. Okay. So once you, you, you center in on an idea, um, you're, you're taking it from a right brain creative kind of part of your brain of like mm -hmm. what's possible to this is possible and I need to find out how viable it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm drilling deep on one idea, so I need to focus and, and that, that's just a completely different thing than uh, how your brain and your body works when you box. Does that make sense? It does. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that, bra that breath helps you start to, to take all of this, like, focus that energy from your whole body and bring it right up here where, where you want it to be. 
when you play chess. So as you get really good with this, you're you're just kind of shifting from one to the next. You have a tremendous amount of control, I would imagine, as you become experienced with these breathing techniques. Yes, and understanding the um, the neuroscience here mm. and and where your brain is lighting up when you do different activities. Mm -hmm. I noticed a big difference when I was anecdotally doing this and it was still a hypothesis versus studying the neuroscience of it and understanding, okay, not only am I doing this breath, which in theory helps bring, you know, my, my bandwidth to where it needs to be, but also I can kind of put my, my internal focus on that part of my brain. Mm. And, and even if it's placebo, it, it feels like it, it, it helps. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's another important thing is like everyone's biochemistry is different. Mm -hmm. You sure. might be wired as a more anxious person and doing a Kabbalah Bhati breath won't have nearly as much effect on you as someone who's more tranquil by nature. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, you, you know, going into a pitch, if you're generally more like introverted, less charismatic, uh, more, more like even keel kind of person, Doing a Kabbalah Bhati breath before you go, like try to make that sale is going to be a lot more beneficial for you mm. than someone who's already really high strung, probably over prepared, yeah. over analyzed. They might even before a pitch, they might even do a downer breath, yeah. even mm. though they need to perform. Yep. That'll help yep. them that bring them back to the level of, of like the equilibrium and peak performance. He's describing so, me. Yeah. That, that's absolutely me. I'm generally running so hot that if I take that additional adrenaline from that environment, I'm talking too fast. And I'm the exact opposite. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why we, we yeah. work really well together because I am generally... <sighs> Very little phases you. Yeah. Yep. So it's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. and, and you two are a perfect example of that, yeah. right? So once you learn this, this spectrum of breath and once you figure out what tools are in your tool mm -hmm. belt, here's a, here's a box breath, here's a four, seven, eight, mm -hmm. here's long exhale breathing, here's... Kabbalah Bhati. Once you figure out what that is, then just like practicing with different punches, different mm. kicks mm. In, in certain situations, you know when to apply them, right? So it, it's not, it's not a one size fits all. It's a, it's a, there's a time and place for everything. And you can start to di diagnose and, and apply what you've already practiced to, to that moment. This is what you're talking about. Feels like uh, an additional component that a high level coach might bring in and maybe this is happening right like I, I don't engage with coaches who are coaching professional combat sports but i would imagine if i had you know uh, a top tier boxer or an mma fighter or a kickboxer or somebody that if i'm coaching them from the outside i might be guiding them on on breath as well as here's what you need to adjust in the next round here's some water yeah well, i mean your... and regardless of whether they're a chest boxer right if they're even if they're I can see benefit to, well, I mean, let's face it, I see benefit to this type of breathing, whether you're involved in any pugilist sport whatsoever. But, like, I, I, I agree, like, even if you're just an MMA guy, and you mentioned you had somebody that is using this breathing in their own matches, but they're not going in playing chess. I, I could see you bringing this in with some of the teams that you work with. Absolutely. Drumming. Yep, yep. I absolutely could see some benefit to this um, if I have students involved in that, that are going into a, a in this case a band competition but they're always very high strung i could see this breathing being able to help them mm -hmm. for sure and, and breath is really just the the key to a to a bigger lock and door mm -hmm. right your, your breath will signal to your body what state you're in and even if you're not currently in that state if you start doing the breath that's associated with that state usually you can kind of take a shortcut to getting into that state mm. more quickly, quickly yeah. and the, the the applicability here in chess boxing and any martial art is if I'm able to do that even five to ten seconds faster than my opponent at the beginning of a round, think about the domino effect of momentum yeah. that exists at the beginning They're of a round. They're always trying to catch up. Right. Yeah. If I land that big shot before they do in the first five to ten seconds before they've transitioned, everything else. Is, is the rest of the rounds hell for them, yeah. right? Yep. Because they're, they're, they're trying to come back from something. Or on the board, if you can make your first move that much better, even if they become better breath-wise, they're working from a deficient position. Any chess player will tell you when they make one blunder, 
it's very rare that's an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. One blunder, they tend to happen in bundles. So you make a mistake, it triggers a fear response. Mm. You feel threatened. Right. So the part of your brain that you want to use part. when you play chess, I, I, I boom, really now you're that. shifting back to your amygdala. Oh no, I made a mistake. Oh no, they're going to see it. Oh no. And I talk about this a lot with my drumming students where uh, they'll often go in front of a judge to compete. And it's just them. There's a judge sitting at a table and they've got a score sheet and the drummer will come in front of the judge and start to play. And it's very common that if you make a mistake, which happens, they, that mistake causes them to make lots of more mistakes. And so I talk about you have to learn how to just move on, right? And you can still win and have made a mistake because other people can make mistakes and not be able to recover from it. And so it's that same sort of concept that I'm seeing here. Like you make a mistake in chess, if your brain is now focused on that mistake rather than the rest of the game, that's it. What's happening is you're getting out of flow state. Yep. You're, you're, when you're at your best, when you're in peak performance, you're in flow. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a hyper-present uh, subconscious state mm -hmm. that your brain is not focused on the past, focused on the present, focused on what you're doing wrong, focused on what you're doing right. It's just doing. Yeah. And, and my talk this weekend was called Winning the Fight for Peak Performance. Mm. Uh, fight is an acronym. F is flow. And, and there's, there's five P's associated with each one of these, these letters. But if the goal is flow state, what you need to do to, to get to flow state is to prime for that. Mm. So I is ignite. Like you, you don't just boom, have a fire that's mm. roaring. Yeah. You need to spark it mm. in order for the spark to find something you need kindling. Makes sense. The practice, the, 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 the leading up to the point where it's time to spark. All those sparring rounds doing Kabbalah Bhati, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's putting putting twigs on a little little pyramid to to get ready to, to spark it. That makes sense. Yep. Mm. I can go through the rest of the acronyms if you want. Yeah, please. <laughs> Fight, <laughs> ignite. Uh, yeah. So flow. Flow, flow sorry. Ignite. Yep. Fight is flow, ignite. Yep. So so flow, ignite. Um, in order to know what you're priming for, you, you need a priority. You need a goal. So what is the goal in, in the context of chess boxing? Let's say I'm winning on the board. Okay. Bell rings. We're going into boxing because I know I'm winning on the board. I don't need to knock out my, opponent. you just need to get back to the board. You're going to play a little more conservatively. I'm going to use my cardio and my footwork to stay away from mm -hmm. him. I'm going to try to make him use his energy to try to knock me out because he knows he's behind on the board. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make him you know, more tired and even worse on the board next round. I just want to survive. Yeah. Now I know my goal. Now I know what to prime for, mm. right? I don't need to take risks. I don't need to take a big shot that could open me up. So got my goal. H is harmony. Okay. So you think about winning a fight. Very rarely do you think about like peace or harmony. And I'm not talking about winning a fight against someone else. The fight is against yourself. Mm. yourself yeah. If your body's working against yourself, like we just talked about, you're trying to play chess in your amygdala. You're the caveman playing mm -hmm. a king's mm -hmm. game. You aren't in harmony. Yep. You aren't working. You aren't coordinating all of your biological tools mm -hmm. to 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 be harmonic and and, and to 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 win. Um, and then T is triumph. T is the win part. And, nice. and triumph has almost nothing to do with with outcome. Having the hand raised at the end, the, the triumph comes long before that. It, it is the feeling of peak performance. It is the mm -hmm. feeling of even if I lose. It wasn't because uh, I could have done better. If I lose when I did my best, there's no regret there. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had that feeling a few times. Mm -hmm. in, in Me competition. too. You step off the floor and it's, I know I gave that everything I had. Give me another thousand rolls of the die. It's not going to be any better. It's almost a good feel, even with loss. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. good feeling of like, that was everything I had. Yeah. Yeah. That person was better than me yep. and deserves I, I to go no on. Problem losing yeah. I've actually and been there. You've learned the most from that. For sure. Right? It's yeah. it's like a it, it's it's a benefit. It's another step towards success when when it's that that kind of tea. So there's the fight. <laughs> Is that your acronym? Did you come up with that? That's yeah. awesome. Thanks. I like that. Which letter was the hardest? I think harmony. Yeah. Good. Convincing people that harmony is important in winning a fight seems counterintuitive. Mm. Um, but I think anybody who spent true. time in combatives, it I makes agree. sense. I I mean, yeah. yeah. All right. 
So what do we do with all of this, right? I mean, we're talking about this in terms of mostly competition. Mm -hmm. And we've alluded to some, you know, some morning stuff, some lifestyle mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But you've worked with plenty of people who are not chess boxers. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with people who aren't professional athletes and really don't have aspirations to be that. Mm -hmm. So other than a morning coffee substitute, mm -hmm. what do we tell the audience? Think about tr triggers and responses, mm -hmm. action and reaction. Mm -hmm. So when, when you identify a priority, when, when, when you have a goal that you know is important, that you want to peak perform in, that's when you start to work backwards mm -hmm. from how to prime for it, right? So let's say, okay, I need to have a very important, difficult discussion with a loved one. What kind of state do I want to be in for that? Mm -hmm. Do I want to be hyped up? Do I want to be calm? And, and once you identify where on that spectrum you want to be state-wise, you can apply your training to mm -hmm. achieve that state. To put I, your body in that place. I know yep. my biochemistry. I know that I tend to be more anxious or I tend to be more calm. So in order to get to that state that I think I need to be in, here's how I'm going to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Here's the breath I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to visualize it. I definitely recommend once breathing becomes a little bit more subconscious um, to, to add the closed eyes visualization to it. Mm -hmm. And not everyone's brain works this way. Not everyone can see the like visual pictures of them going through the range of motion for a, for a punch combination. Um, yeah, I, I know my, my girlfriend's an artist. Um, nice. Uh, my girlfriend's an artist and, and she has like a color and visual kind of brain mm. and she doesn't have an internal voice. There's not words happening in her head. Mm. There are colors and moods and, and pictures. Yep. And I can't relate to that. Like that's not Just how not my you. brain works. Yep. I, I have a voice in my head all the time if I don't keep it in check, that is saying things, directing me, uh, you know, just, uh, I'm much more like verbal. Mm -hmm. And so when I close my eyes, it takes a lot of effort for me to use words to help paint the picture of what I want to do. Um, so, so the visualization part was a much harder, uh, effort for me to, to nail when I was starting to tie breath work to, to mm. visualization. Um, but, you know, close your eyes, visualize, uh, okay, I want this conversation to go super well with my loved one. Um, I, you know, the, the types of words and, and feelings that I want to come out of this are union, peace, love. I'm starting to like associate sure. the breath that I'll, I'll be doing to, to prepare and the breath I'll be doing during it with these uh, words that have past associations with it mm -hmm. that I can, I can start to weave together and tie together. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it might seem like it's a little overkill. Um, and, and I don't recommend doing this for like every single thing in your life. Right. Cause then you're just always. You're going to drive yourself work. nuts. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think you start with the most important things, that pitch, mm -hmm. that fight, that conversation. And, and, uh, and you start practicing these breaths as much as you can try tie it to another routine. Mm -hmm. Hey, every time I work out when I'm resting, I'm not just huffing and puffing, scrolling Instagram and sipping water. Now, you know, my phone's away and I'm practicing one of the breaths that helps calm me down. And there's going to be a cascading effect from that. I would imagine just as we were talking about, you know, you make a, a good or a bad move on the board, mm -hmm. you start bringing this into your life. It's going to impact other things, you know, the stuff after the breath, it's going to later in the day. Correct. Yeah. It, the, the ripple effect or the domino effect of this is, it, you know, I, I can just say from personal experience, yeah. it's completely changed my life. Because hmm. um, right, most people, I won't say most people, there's a, there's a, a subset of people that have never taken a conscious breath. Yeah. Yeah. I would if, say if it's not, yeah. if it's not most, it is many. Yeah. yeah. I would probably say majority. So even just that shift, the first thing we did, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. take your first conscious breath right now. <laughs> so that's big. It's the first step. <laughs> that's big stuff. Yep. Now you've got some stuff that people want to go deeper, right? I do. Yeah. So um, first, uh, since Sensei Seth, 
uh, been investing a lot more in YouTube. And state change management content will be coming to YouTube. If you're interested in this kind of thing, um, at Moving With Matt is all my handle for every single social media outlet. So whatever you use, it's the same thing. Moving With Matt, Matt only has one T. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, Fight and Flow is a, a fitness concept where not only are we doing like basic body weight calisthenics uh, and, and martial art movements combined with yoga. So it's, it's getting the body uh, you know, more open, flexible, mobile, coordinated, balanced. Uh, but we do have a side of it that is breath work oriented. So if you guys have seen Avatar, The Last Air, Airbender. The new one? Any of them. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's tribes for uh, earth, yeah. water, air, and fire. Yep. That's how we program our workouts. Oh, no way. So, you know, fire, think about what fire would be. Yeah. A lot of cardio, a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, movement, shadow boxing, squats, burpees, that kind of thing. Earth is like strength, uh, yep. stability. You're sitting in horse stance, doing that, guy, that kind of thing. Water is a little bit more like yogic, vinyasa, mm -hmm. spines bending six directions. You're getting twists. Uh, you're, you're, you're making sure your body's resilient. Um, and then air is um, a little bit of balance work, but a lot of breath work. Mm, and, and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the one that um, is, is harder for people to wrap their head around. But if you've listened to this whole episode so far, it makes you'll sense. get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's important. And uh, just like throwing a punch as a rep, taking a breath. Well. Yeah. And you're doing a lot now to continue to grow the chest boxing around and making that larger. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think this leads into that well. Very, that's why you were out here this weekend, right? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, as much as you love us, you didn't come out here <laughs> just to see us. Added bonus. I mean, this is great. Oh, I mean, you did. The, the conference was the bonus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes. So, so chess boxing is becoming more of the focus of my career um, because we're a sport that's 20 years old. We've recently had a lot of media attention and this wave of momentum that I, I feel really called to, to ride that wave of momentum and, and use uh, my skill set to, to help this sport grow. Um, I've been promoting fights for, for 12 years mm -hmm. and, uh, and they've been white collar charity boxing events, but I, I have production chops and, and the ability to um, train, commentate, all, all these kind of skill sets that are that are needed to grow chess boxing in the United States. Yeah. So I, I started an organization called United Chess Boxing. Um, we, we have a broadcasting relationship with Fight TV. So all chess boxing will, will now be on Fight TV. Awesome. If you're a Fight TV subscriber, uh, starting probably April, May, you'll see chess boxing starting to pop up. Um, and then uh, weekly trainings are starting all over the country. We, we have ones in New York, Atlanta, uh, and because of this weekend, we have one starting up in Boston. Um, through someone that I met at the conference. So, uh, you know, if, if you like chess and martial arts, uh, if you have a gym um, that has space and time on the schedule for a 60 or a 90 minute session, um, we can help you find a chess coach. We can help you with the state change management programming uh, that can be done virtually uh, or through content. And you can start to have a, a chess boxing weekly at, at your home gym. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, reach out to me again, it's at moving with Matt, uh, Matt at fight and .co is my email. I'll respond to all of it. And, and we talked about this a little bit before, just because someone might not want to just do the boxing, right? Mm -hmm. That maybe, maybe they, they don't want to do boxing in their martial arts school. Maybe they want to do chess points barring, chess kickboxing. You're not opposed to that. Not only am I not opposed to that, but we have alternate formats for chess boxing already. So what I competed in is the open format. Any chess level, you can be a grandmaster, any boxing level, you can have over 100 pro fights. Anyone can enter that and compete. Um, but we have something called chess boxing light, which is point sparring. Okay. And instead of three minute rounds, it's two minute rounds. Mm -hmm. It's still boxing's point sparring. Sure. But you can adapt that to be kickboxing, Muay Thai, sure, sure. whatever. Um, but that's intended to, to favor boxers. Mm. Um, we actually, uh, give warnings and deduct points if you hit too hard. Uh, so it is legitimately point sparring, kind of like Taekwondo, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, and boxing is scored as equally as chess. So even if you get checkmated on the board, if you win the boxing rounds, it's called a draw. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, and then the step before that is non-contact. It's called chess boxing fit. And it's what we did at the conference this weekend. Okay. So instead of any kind of uh, punches being landed on each other, 
what you're doing is you're either working a heavy bag or a coach with mitts for one minute before you play a chest blitz game. Okay, so you're psyching up the central nervous system, yep, you're moving yep. the brain's bandwidth, you're making that chess game more difficult. And uh, in the case of a draw on the board, you go back to the heavy bag or the coach, uh, and whoever did better with technique, number of punches okay. landed, punch, I didn't even consider ends that up as a method. That's awesome. winning the winning the match, right? So most of those end on the board. Uh, sure. That's that's a chess leaning format mm -hmm. um, but uh, but it does come to draw we, we had one yesterday with two 2100 elo chess players which very strong they got a draw position on the board and they had one more boxing round so uh, you know we, we had a couple hundred people in the room and we divided the room on who was supporting which one That's and funny. neither of them had ever boxed before so the worst technique you've ever seen nice. sorry if <laughs> Those two players are watching this, but there was so much hype around them trying to land more punches than the other because we had these accelerometers and we had a uh, number of punches landed, oh, like wow. metrics up on the board. So you could actually see like the score going up and the That's cheers true. happening. It was so much fun. So yeah, yeah. I so really cool. dig this. I I can't wait to see uh, Bill Superfoot Wallace starting to learn chess to do kickboxing. You know what I'm waiting for? Yeah. Computers getting to the point that androids can box. Mm. Right, so you can chess and box yeah. a robot. Pretty cool. That would be you know, pretty cool. Big Mo versus Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> <laughs> that takes battle bots to another another yeah. level, right? <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. That's really cool. great. Yeah, uh, sure. Matt, anything else we want to make sure that they know? Just gratitude. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Thanks yeah, for helping thanks get for chess here. boxing out there. Yeah, it's um, it's great open stuff. To, my my hippie woo woo breath work. No, it's, 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 it's cool. <laughs> it, sure. it might be hippie and it might be woo, but that doesn't mean it's not rooted in science. I think it doesn't you know, have value. The, the reason that I think we were both really excited to have you back on was because this is stuff that people in the martial arts are really not talking about. Mm. And the I know from competition, it generally took me after I would do forms, I was forty five minutes to come back to normal from doing one form out in the ring because I was here and this is exactly what we're talking about. So I've experienced what it's like in the absence of that. And when we talk about martial arts as not just for self-defense, but life skills, I mean, martial arts gives us a wonderful opportunity to train this mm. so we can implement it in non-combative ways. So I think, I think it's great. I hope everybody out there really takes this to heart. Well said, totally agree. Awesome, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Well, hey, go deeper. Check out all Matt's stuff. What was it? At Moving With Matt. At one moving, T. At Moving With Matt. One T. Fight and flow. You got them. Check out chess boxing. Do all that stuff. And if you do start bringing something like this into your school, we want to hear about it. You can email us, Andrew at Jeremy at Whistlekick.com, at Whistlekick on all of your social media. And, and that's it. For now, do, do we want to try and do this with three? I'm not sure that you'll know what it is. So we close our episodes, most of our episodes, with our three-part kind of mantra. Train hard, smile, and have a great day. I get a smile. Okay. Okay. You get train hard. Train hard. Smile. And have a great day. That was, I love it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs>